everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really nice cards using stencils. So some of you may recognise these. They are the stamp and stencil freebie that was in the Simply Cards and Paper Craft magazine issue 194. This, even by the time this goes out, because I'm filming this a couple of weeks before it probably will, I'm sure it's still available online and I will link those links below because I know that a lot of the online magazine kind of shops, they do do back copies and they do a lot of sales on back copies as well. So I'll share all this below. Now I did make a lovely card, it was a uh, bridge fold I believe that I made using the stamps and I'll link that one up here. Okay, But today we are going to use the stamps but we're only going to be using the sentiments. We're going to be focusing on this stencil here and it's a layered stencil there's quite a few different ways to use it and i'll just show you some of the examples i've got here so this is the first one i've done and i've just used it with my distressed oxide inks so it's got quite a matte finish and i've just done sorry for your loss and i've just done a little group of three of them there and i've used this one this one and this one in fact i've used everything apart from this kind of decorative piece and I use pretty much everything again just bar that bit there I'm not really it's not really my style that kind of thing so I don't tend to use that but I love this layered effect so that's that one there then I done it again but this time I've covered the whole piece with clear embossing powder and it actually gives like a faux laminated look so sometimes what you will find, depending on the card that you use and how you use the oxide inks, is that they would dry very matte and quite dull. So if you just see the comparison there, when you add the clear embossing powder over it, it just really brings out the vibrant colour. Whereas when you look at the red there, you can see it's very, very matte. And whereas this one is nice and shiny. So I thought what I would do is show you both ways and combine them in this card where I've done this more emboss resist technique. So it allows you to be able to create beautiful scenes and also color the background. So if you notice, I've got that blue kind of ombre looking background and you do that at the very end. Now I have done this before using white embossing powder and I've done it on a Facebook Live tutorial, but I haven't actually shared anything on my YouTube. And I figured since I'm doing this kind of technique fortnight as such where I'm doing colouring and stenciling and embossing and backgrounds and all that kind of thing, I thought this would be a good one to show. I absolutely love this. This is my favourite out of the three. I really like the orientation of this one. I haven't put a sentiment on it because I actually really like it with nothing on. I think it would just be a really nice note card to just write something inside. So we will see, but it's there for me to add to it if I need to. Okay, so here I have a piece of three and three quarters by eight and a quarter. So it's a default A4 length, but if your default is eight inches, which I know it is in, in other parts of the world, that's completely fine. And like I said, you don't have to do it this orientation. You can do it here. You can do it six by six, five by five, A2, anything you want. So I'm just showing you the technique because it is really nice. But to get this card size, you want a piece of eight by eight and a quarter. And then along the eight inch side, you're just going to score at four. Okay, so that'll give you your four by eight and a quarter. And then what I've done is I've, this piece is only three and three quarters because I like that white trim. You can add ribbon along there if you want to. You could put another little piece of pattern paper or something. I just like the way it's lifted up. I think it really just shows off the blue and just that background a little bit more. So I'm going to move all that safely out of the way. Okay, so first of all, you want to kind of start to do your arrangement. Now you could, if you want to, is just have a big cluster of poppies kind of coming down and then slowly kind of cascading off there. I'm going to just do the same again because I think it's quite an easy way to do it. And then I'll show you the steps to get that kind of resist effect because you don't have to do it, but it is very, very easy. And it is all down to the magic of this pen. <laughs> all will be revealed. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is just bring over that card and keep it there. Just so, because I do, I really like it. It was a fesco and I always often find your fescos are always, you end up going back to them all. They're always the most favourite. I really like it. I like that that's a little bit offset there. Um, I do make mistakes. You can see a little bit there where I've missed a bit with the white, but I think all these little bits of white add a highlight to it. So I actually think it looks really nice. Okay, so for the colours... These are the ones that I thought worked quite nicely together. So for this one here, I used, for all of the green, 
on all of the cards, I use these, the shabby shutters and then pine needles. So I do them all with shabby sh shutters and then I go over with the pine needles. So that's the two greens. I think they kind of blend and work quite well together. For that orange and yellow look, which I just thought worked so nice together, I use these two here. So the mustard seed and the spiced marmalade. I will list all of these combinations in my blog. I think they work really nice together. For the purpley one, I use the seedless preserves and chipped sapphire. Thought again, they worked really well. For the red one, I use the barn door and the fired brick. And then for the sky, which I will do again on this one, I'm using tumbled glass and mermaid lagoon. You don't have to use distress oxide, you can use any ink pads, okay? So don't worry if you don't. And even if you maybe just have two or three, you don't have to have two different colours. You could have all yellow, all red. It's very, very easy to adapt to what you've got. So for today's, I thought I'd do more of a pinky tone. I know I've kind of got it. It's a little bit pinky with this, but it is still more red. So yeah, I'm going to try and go for a more of a pinky look. If it's the same, it doesn't matter. And this one I'm using worn lipstick and abandoned coral. Now you can use any kind of blending tools, but I am using my makeup brushes here. These are brilliant. I mean hundreds of you, literally hundreds. I can see on the Amazon storefront how many purchases have been made and it's hundreds and hundreds of you have brought these and they are brilliant. So the links will be shared below. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, is you've got this one here, which is your background so that's your first one you lay down and you want to do that in the lighter color I'll show it there so you can see it this one here and this one we're going to do over the top in a darker shade so I'll be doing first in the worn lipstick and then to get that kind of detail which you can see here that kind of line that is using then the abandoned coral so first of all I'm going to go along I'll do it slightly different get a bit of scrap paper in here as well just for the ones where I go slightly off the edge you may also benefit having another piece of scrap just to cover any other of the stenciled images because this one here I'm using is a bit bigger. In fact, I have got a small, I've got the whole different like sizes, so I might use that one actually because it's a bit smaller. So you just don't want to obviously go off into this space here. So I'm going to cover that like that. And then I'm just going to ink up my brush and then I'm just going to go in. And I like to get some of the kind of the swoosh kind of movement like that circular movement I don't want to go right to the edges really dark I want to keep that kind of more pinky color in the center and then when you lift it you kind of get those little highlighted bits on the edge and I, I want that okay so then I'm going to go along again be careful with the oxide obviously it, it does stay a little bit wet but because I'm laying things down flat it should be okay so the next one I'm going to pop like this and the good thing about this stencil and with any stencils is you can flip them so you'll see that I've got the leaves going in all directions it's because you just flip the stencil each time so once I'm finished with this I will show you that so I'm just going to go along now and just do five or well, four more just the same as that okay so I'm really pleased with those and what you would have noticed with the last two is I didn't re-ink them I just used the color that's already on here so I'm going to keep this same brush what I have here is a damp cloth or little kind of foam cloth just to wipe down your mask okay these obviously will wipe off perfectly okay make sure you don't have anything on the other sides because you will be flipping to and fro okay and then what I'm going to do with this piece of scrap is just rub off the lighter color there the so next we're going to use this one now I'll show you there this one here with that detailed piece in the middle and we're going to use the abandoned coral i'm hoping this is going to be dark enough i'll do a little test of the color it's going to work against it because these do dry slightly lighter as well i think it's going to be okay i think it's going to give a nice nice subtle um, effect so you just line it up they will perfectly line now what i would say is with this stencil and with a lot of stencils when you have a thin piece of detail don't go rubbing it like that because you're likely to kind of stretch and bend the plastic and because this one has such a thin detailed piece in the center there like so it's best to just tap okay so I'm just going to tap it down all the way along that line now I do think that this is not going to show enough so I'm going to just try and keep that in place probably not going to use that one I'm going to try festive berries. See if that gives me a bit more of a deeper 
lift this one up. Yes, it does. Perfect. So if I just bring that one up there now, you'll see that effect. And then what we do at the end with my black fine liner pen is we just add tiny little kind of dots just to create the center there. So again, I'm now going to, so now I know that that's the better one. I'm just gonna go along each of these and do the same. I'm just bringing in the very, very small brush that comes in this set just to blend a little bit so I don't get a harsh line. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, so you can see how cool they look. Really nice, really subtle. You don't need to go crazy. So in the end, it was the Festive Berries and Worn Lipsticks. So I'll keep those two together, pop that one back. The Abandoned Coral was just a bit too close to the Worn Lipstick, I think, for it to really stand out. Okay, so next we're gonna now do all of our stems. So like I said, you can flip this. So if you want one of them, see the little buds here, I've got one facing to the left, then I've got it to the right, and so on. So you get a really nice, I think quite a, a realistic look. So I'm kind of conscious that I've got that up there. So I think what I'm gonna do is start up there and I'm actually going to do this one right at the top and have it just slightly offset. Sometimes when you have stuff actually coming off the card, again, it just gives a bit more of a, it's just pleasing, more pleasing to the eye than having everything perfectly in place. So you see it's kind of going off there and there. I'm gonna have this one just coming off at the top and then I will be able to continue the stem coming down. So now I'm gonna use another of the little ones. I find these really good to do the stems in kind of more little pieces. And I'm gonna bring in these two colors. Now, first of all, I'm just gonna go and use the shabby shutters and just do all the plain, all of the light color. So I'm just inking it up. Now, don't do the bud. You can if you want to do it all green as if it's not even opened up at all, but I quite liked having them in the same colors so it looked like they just hadn't opened yet. But I'm just gonna very carefully, and then when you get to the actual poppy, that's, you've got such good control with these, you can go right up to it, literally. And if it goes a little bit over, it's not the end of the world, you can always go back in with the pink, but you can get it so close. And again, just bring that around there. And then I'm just gonna carry it on from the bottom here. And then now you can see in much more detail, I can get right up to the very bottom of that poppy and come down with this. And all I'm gonna do is just join it up again. And I'll have more things kind of coming off there anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna keep it in place and I'm gonna come back in with this small one here and the worn lipstick ink it up a little bit and then I'm just going to come in on that bud and cover the whole thing with the worn lipstick in a similar way that I did the poppy you know the opened poppies I don't want it to be like perfect and because we're going to add fine liner detail to it later if you do find that you've gone over a little bit you can easily correct all of that it really is very forgiving so don't worry if you think oh I don't really like that now you can ink that off but because I'm going into a darker color I'm not too worried and then I'm just going to add just a little again if you kind of dab it you get the speckle effect and it actually looks really quite nice so again keeping your darker color towards that kind of base of the bud because that's where it would be darker and now if I reveal look at that lovely effect it really is so so easy to do but so effective I've been enjoying this so much okay so then moving on again so I'm going to I'll join that I think in a bit once I've added a few more. So let's now start to do some of the stems. Now I would say if you're gonna stick with it in on this side and do everything that you want this way and then when you go to flip it, just give it a wipe off. You don't wanna obviously, um, yeah, run the risk of uh, ruining your lovely piece of artwork. So I'm gonna do this one down here. Again, just cover it with that lighter green. And lift that one up get a lovely colour there. I've just realised what I've done. That was the one with the pink and see it's got a slightly kind of more mustard colour. So yeah try and remember which ones you've used because now I've well, not contaminated it. I can just rub it off on my wet cloth there. And see now it's almost clean so I'm not too worried. But yeah slightly different colour there. A little bit of a pink tinge and then I want to do another bud. I'm going to do another one facing the same way and then I'm going to do one facing the opposite way down here a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this one up here. I'm gonna have it about 
there might have it a little bit wonky in fact yeah I'm going to almost join it up to the bottom of this one that I've just done have it a little bit wonky so again I'm going to bring this in here okay so there's that one there so now I think I want to flip this and that's basically now what I'm going to do I'm just going to go along filling it all up when I'm going to do all the stems first and then I'll kind of talk you through when I come to do the leaves but I'm just going to wipe all that off now I think the key is making sure this is so clean because yeah when you do flip it um, maybe if you're, you're new to stenciling it's the first time you've ever done it is don't flip it for the minute just keep everything on the same side until you're really kind of happy with you know and you enjoy doing it so now I've flipped it that way I can bring this one down here and I'm going to have that one I'm going to have it so that can you see there this piece is just coming over here because you can layer over so I'll quickly show you that one so again I'm coming in with the green make sure you keep it nice you know push down so that nothing goes underneath it now what I would say as well is I'm going to go back over all my stems with the darker green but if you are worried that you're not going to get it to line up then come in with your darker green as I'll show you later on just the same way as really that I'm doing the pinks but because I've got the same pink going over there you can kind of work the both you know both of them together so I'm just gonna put that one in there add a little bit more and then start to kind of stipple a little bit and then reveal that one okay so I'm going to continue this, I'm going to do another stem here, here and here, I'm going to do a few more coming up there and then I will join you when I start to add the leaves. Okay, so I'm just starting on my leaves and I am joining this particular one here, so it overlaps this tall one that I added at the beginning. And once we go and add all the dark green in again, that will just cover. Can you see now how it's going to start to disguise that piece? And then what I can do is bring in this piece here, which should join up. Let's go, let's go with this one here actually. Yeah, and then I'm just going to join that one down. Like so. Okay. So again, it's really easy to kind of you know add this wherever now again with the leaves just to give it a bit more of a, a real look you'll see that I've overlapped some of them so if I bring this one in here you see they've got that leaf overlapping this one here um, I think that's the only one I've done so I'm going to show you that one again so let's do will that reach yeah that'll go over just a little bit just touching a little bit there so I'm just laying all this down like I said I'm going to be adding my kind of shading with the darker pine needles and also with a fine tip pen later on okay but once we add the darker color that will go over that a little bit more and then I'm going to add I think I need to have one no I think I'm going to flip it now okay so just flip that one over let's go along here and I'm going to have another one coming off of here just below so it overlaps this one here Okay, I'm really pleased with that one, and then I think I'll do that bigger one down here as well. I think it'll look quite good coming off of this, and kind of coming off the bottom of the card as well. Okay, and then let's bring in a few of these little ones. So I'm going to bring one up here. The nice thing is you can see through this stencil because I have got, I'll show you how I store my stencils in a moment, but a lot of them are black. And it's quite difficult for you to be able to see things like this, to be that exact. So I do like it when you have clear ones. Yep, love that one. I think we need something up here, nearer the top. So let's do this one here. Yep, I like that a lot. And then I think we need something down here. So let's do this big one again. Again, it's kind of coming off the page because that looks nice. You can see how easy it is to kind of, you know, cover any mistakes you might make, like that colour of that stem, for example, the fact that I got a bit of pink up there. You know, there's lots of ways for you to kind of, yeah, rescue it. 
So then this one I'm going to finish. I think this will be the last leaf I do. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. Do you know what? It looks beautiful just as it is. You could leave that just like that now and pop it on a card and it would look lovely. Put a nice little, you know, sentiment with it. Beautiful. So I'm just going to clean this off and then we will start on the the darker green kind of highlight and I will put that on high speed once you see how I do it and how easy it is then you can just watch me whip through that so let's say I'm going to do concentrate on this one here so I need to bring in this big stem here so I'm just lining up this stem okay it's very easy to line up you just want to obviously make sure you don't see any white and then you know you've got it in place now because I've got all these overlapping in that center part that's where I want to concentrate on that darker green and also you would generally have a darker colour right coming from the top there of that flower because the flower would be creating a shadow so that's yeah again if you do want to try and get it as close to real <laughs> and the little tip so you can see there it's very darker green right there um, and then I've kind of gone continue that darker colour there not on everything I mean you don't have to worry too much this is using a pen this kind of real dark here on there and this is pen here as well and all of the vine detail or vein detail is pen as well so don't worry about that but yeah so I'm just going to ink up a little bit on there and then I'm just going to start flicking it down from the top so that you get a nice blend and then you can kind of dab a real dark colour right at the top and then in this middle section I'm going to go quite dark and then just kind of flick it out either side so you get a little bit of a highlight, if I bring it up, there, look at that, it's perfect. And it really starts to make other things pop, but can you see, I've got a slight little highlight there where I've just flicked it out from the top, flicked it up from that centre and flicked it out from the bottom and it will give you that. And that's what you can get, that's the beauty of using these, you, you get a lot of control. So using that technique, I'm going to go along and do all of the stems and the same with the leaves. I will pop the same leaf over, so let's say this one here, um, line it up on this one there. You can do the leaves, you know, but you can do all this at the same time as well. And then again, that darker colour on the actual base of the leaf and then I'm just kind of coming into the main part and flicking it. I'm not going to ink it up with any more colour and if I lift it away, look at that really lovely kind of ombre effect that you get. So I'm going to continue that now over the rest of this card. I'll pop it on high speed and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so there is everything done now in terms of the colour. It's, I think, beautiful. I think it's like a little piece of artwork coming together and that is just using a stencil and some inks. It's just such a cool thing to do and it's made me appreciate stencils more. I used to stencil a lot in the 90s. I think we all did. I think everybody decorated their house with stencils. But um, it's something that I have many of. Let me just show you. So this is how I store mine. So just move that out of the way. So when I get them, I punch a hole punch and then I just clip them onto a binder ring. So this is what I mean with the black ones. I love these and I I went through a phase of using lots of them and um, they're great. I mean, look, you've got the moustaches there when they were all on trend. You've got some clouds and things like that and lovely leaf ones. I think I'm going to start pulling some of these out again just to create some really nice backgrounds. But you can't, it's harder to see with those ones, whereas with these ones here on the top, they're obviously lighter in colour. That's a beautiful clarity stamp one. I love that one. Really, really nice. So I think I definitely need to start getting these out again. So I will add that one to these because I'm kind of keeping the lighter coloured ones together. And then I'll just show you. These ones here are stamping up and they are grey. So again, you can see through these. They're really nice. There is a difference. Those black ones are cheaper. They are, I think, Craft Sensations from the range. And it was something like you got, I think, I want to say 10 of them for a pound, something like that. They were really cheap. But those, again, you can see through them. These are really nice ones, perfect with backgrounds. And I've got that very, very large geometric one there. This one here has a self-adhesive back. So you can spray them with a low tack. This one here has its own 
kind of tacky back to it. And then there's some more of the lighter ones, all different ones. I think some of these, I want to say Tim Holtz, I can't remember. But anyway, that's how I store them. So they just then will hook onto my trolley. And it's so much easier to be able to see them and they take up no room at all. Okay, so now we want to go back to this and add a little bit of detail. So I've just got here, these are the Arteza fine liners. These are the 0.4. And I used, I can't remember what colour green one it was actually. Let me just clear all this away before we have an accident and um, all that hard work <laughs> gets ruined in a flash. Okay, make sure, I'd say make sure your hands are clean as well. Go and give them a wash in case you've got anything yeah, that you don't realise is on there. So I think that colour is going to be okay because again I like to keep things subtle and very easily, again let me just zoom in, all I'm doing is coming from, I'm not coming from the middle of the stem, come from like this corner little piece here and just kind of come out like that and then do some flex, little flicks like so. So again this one here coming from down from there Like so. You don't have to do this, completely optional, but if I show you this one here, I do think it looks really nice. Again, once we put that lovely shine over the top. So I'm just going to do that with these. Okay, so that's that one. Then I'm bringing in the black here. And to create the centres, all I do is tiny, if I bring this in here, it's very small little C's, letter C. And then do it the opposite way, so it's back to front. And just do lots of little C's. You can do dots if you want, but if you do that you just get a bit more of like a kind of a, I don't know, just I that's how I do it. <laughs> it's something I was taught in school, so for details and things like that. So I'm just going in here, very tiny, little C's. And then with the buds, I want to come in with a real darker, I think that one will work quite well but I want to do a darker kind of colour coming up here and then kind of just... Am I in shot there? Yeah, just about. I forget, I've got it zoomed. Just to create a real kind of shape to them. Okay, so again, I'm just going to do that on these two here. Okay, so now we want to start doing a little bit of heat embossing. Again, completely optional. This card looks beautiful, just as it is. I could easily put this now onto a card, but I want to show you, like I said, this fortnight is about showing techniques in the cards and not just doing, kind of preparing everything off camera and then showing you. I want to show you on camera. So I've just got an anti-static, they call this the anti-static buddy. It's by Woodware, I believe, my one. I've had this years, literally probably about four years. And it is, um, it's marked and everything. You can make this yourself if you, you know, you have a sewing machine or you don't mind stitching and you can put corn flour in there. But they're very inexpensive. I think this is about 2 99 So for how long it's lasted. And literally it will just leave a powder over your surface and the idea is is that it will remove or sh kind of cover any grease, fingerprints, anything else that might be sticky. It will kind of stop when we go to add our embossing powder it will stop it sticking to anything else apart from where we add the Versamine, the Versafine which is the sticky kind of I guess the agent to grip the embossing powder. Okay so this is when this comes in handy. Now, if you don't have this, you can do this with the Versamark itself and your stencil again, but you would have to go over everything and then stamp it with this. So it's a little bit time consuming. You can do it like that. Whereas this is so much better. So this is the Versa marker. So it's the pen form. You do have a brush nib and then you've got your bullet nib. Okay. So that's perfect for writing. If you've got lovely handwriting, you like to write your own sentiments, you could do that and then heat set them and you'd have a lovely, you know, tailor-made sentiment. But this is what I'm using to do this next step. step. So what you want to do now is colour over all of those poppies. So everything apart from the white or everything that you want, you might just want to highlight the poppy heads and just have them with clear embossing powder. You might just want to do the buds, you might just want to do the leaves, but I went and done everything and you can see here. Now don't worry if you go over the edge because you'll see here where I went over the edges and then where I went to stick the clear embossing powder and where it's set, obviously, like I said, it will stick to everywhere where you add this. You can see where I went over, but I think it just adds a highlight. I don't, you know, don't think nothing of it. Here is maybe a bit more than I would have wanted, 
but again I'm not worried I will still give this card to somebody and if you do get any specks of powder it all adds I think to the overall look so don't be worried if you do get some that doesn't you know that sticks elsewhere than the flower so basically I'm just going to go over it and you can see it will go like a darker colour so you will be able to see where you've coloured Okay, so I think I've done everything. If you forget something, it doesn't matter because you'll notice when you go to add your glue, add your um, embossing powder. Also what you can do, so I've just been thinking as I colour this other ways, if you do have maybe like, it's hard really, but if you've got any plain, maybe even like a blender marker or something, you might be able to just, you know, make your own if you've got the pad. Because I can add this and it will pick up. See any of the pigment, this is, this is pretty new, this one here. And then I can go in again and kind of you know if you're worried that it is drying up or something so but I think my pen's okay so once we've done that I've got here clear embossing powder okay I can't remember who this brand was I've got a feeling it's wow because again I remember a while ago I went through a phase so what you're going to do now because we've prepared it we've, when you tip this over it will stick to all of this kind of embossed sticky substance and then the idea is, is that it won't stick to the white. Now, if we do get any, which I will show you in a moment, you can brush it off, okay? Because what we're going to be doing, you can see already where it's stuck. Can you see? And I can see areas where I've missed. So for example, see how dark that is just there? So I can go back into that after. Looks like I've missed a little bit there. But everything else is covered and it hasn't covered anywhere else on the paper. But you do want to go over it kind of with a fine tooth comb because if you have got any embossing powder on the white and when you heat set it, it's stuck there. And obviously what we're going to be doing afterwards is going over this in blue. And if there is white there, then you're going to see it. But because it's a sky, it might just look like the clouds. So yeah, <laughs> don't worry. Okay, so I've got a brush here and I'm just catching it in the light. And I just want to check like here, I think I've got a bit too much going over into the white. So I'm just going to tidy it up and just blow any excess away. And again, I can see here, but some of it will be highlights, so it's good to keep some of it over, go, you know, if it overlaps. Don't remove it all. And you can always go back over this again. Okay, I'm happy with that. Don't be tempted to add more of this before you've heat set it. Heat set it, then go over it. Okay, but that I'm fine with. So I'm just going to pop this all back into my tub. Okay, so I've got my heat gun here. I'm going to let this get nice and hot. I will turn the volume off, but I'm going to let you see, hopefully, this transform and go really nice and shiny. So look at that amazing finish. Now you can go over and colour again because I have got some spots that I want to go over. I know around there and there's a couple of bits on the leaves. There's a little bit there. Can you just see? You can. You will be able to notice it because it will be more matte than everything else. And you could go over the whole thing again if you want to have more of a smooth image. First kind of application of embossing powder you get a bit of a mottled like hammered metal look. You can see there as it catches the light. But if you add another layer then you'll get more of a smoother finish. So yeah, it's entirely up to you how you want to go with it. But don't be tempted to touch it when it's still hot. Let it cool down. Okay, embossing powder is plastic. It's just very, very fine powder. So um, once it sets, it just sets back into its plastic form again. So I'm going to go over this again with my pen in those areas, get that heat set, and then we can finish it with that lovely blue background. Now, before we add the blue, you do need to be 100% that you have covered every part of your flower. So you can see there, as I catch mine in the light, there isn't a part at all that's not covered in that clear embossing powder because when we add the blue over any part of whatever it is that you've added the clear embossing powder to if it isn't covered you're going to get the color on it so it's best to go a little bit over the edges like I said just to get that white kind of highlight they're not okay so first of all I'm going in with the tumbled glass and I'm going to ink up this one here and I'm going to start from the bottom and you're just going to go right over. Now don't worry if any of the colour, well it will, 
you know, that's the whole point, because we will buff it off afterwards. And this is why it's called emboss resist or resist emboss technique, because your colour will resist against that plastic coating. So do not worry, which is why you'll now understand why you need to be 100% that you have covered you know, as much as possible. So I'm very, very lightly now, I'm not really pushing down as heavy as I was, just to get that kind of nice kind of ombre effect towards the top. I'm going to come back in along the bottom a bit darker and I can already see where I've got the white kind of highlight pieces where it didn't quite hit it. But again, I don't mind that. Okay, so that's enough with that colour. Then I'm going to come in with the darker Mermaid Lagoon. Again, I'm not brushing, I'm not going to clean off. If you are holding the top, make sure you've got clean fingers because the last thing you'd want getting to this point is get any ink on there. And then I'm going to start just kissing the sides with the darker blue. Bring it up a little bit there. Okay. And then I came in with a very, very small amount of this chipped sapphire, literally right at the very bottom. It's almost just to add a bit of a frame, really, and help everything else stand out. So I'm just, I'm more on the paper underneath than I am on the actual card. I just want it to just very slightly, probably went a bit too much there, but I will blend that out. Again, I will list the colours that I've used in my blog for all the blues and stuff, but now that is everything coloured, okay? So clear everything away, wash your hands and get some dry tissue. Okay, so now I've got some kitchen towel. Kitchen towel's better than toilet tissue because it's a little bit more, I'd say, rougher, so it will take off the colour. I'm also just going to get some paper underneath, and you're literally now going to buff it off, so as if you're polishing your... You know, your house, I'm going to scrunch it up a little bit like that. And you're wiping that colour off, so in my case the blue. And can you see a difference between where I've wiped it off at the end there, then this side here. Now if you want to, you can add a little bit of water over these areas to wipe any off, but you have to remember that if the water touches the oxide ink, it will react. Not in a bad way, but you will get a reaction, so you, you know, which is another great technique on its own, but that's all it is. You're buffing off now this colour. Now you can, this is where you'll see, so where I went maybe too far over the edge, but I think it just adds a highlight. It frames those pictures. There might be the odd maybe blue area or areas where I've still I think I could still go over because now you can go back over with the clear embossing powder again because the blue's already set in the background so you can go right over that again but I'm really really pleased with it I think it's lovely so I'm just going to carry on you don't have to do it for too long but just be 100% sure that you've wiped all of that ink off okay so I'm happy with that I am going to add a little bit more embossing clear embossing powder to a few parts of it. Now if you want to cover everything, which is how I got this effect here, see the whole thing is covered, I literally just got this and went like that all the way over and then just sprinkled that all over it and then heat set the whole thing. Okay, Okay. so I finished it, I'm really really pleased with it, I've popped it onto my card there and I'm not sure about sentiment. I just really love just these being just completely plain. So if I do change my mind, you'll see in the pictures, I might add a little one there, maybe like a little happy birthday or to my friend or something. But yeah, so that's the resist technique. It's also just a nice tutorial, I think, to just show you how to use your stencils. If you've got lots and you think, do you know what, I never use them. Maybe this will now inspire you to go and get them out and have a go with them. And also there's those two so that is using stencils in just their, their kind of raw form, just as they come, lay them on the paper and use your inks and you know that's the effect that you get. And then you've got that complete coverage, which I think looks nice. And then you've got this partial clear embossed resist technique card. <laughs> so there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope those of you that have this stamp and stencil set, this again does inspire you to, to use it. I will link, like I said, that 
bridge fold card which used the stamps that will be up there and um, yeah just have fun with it so I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye